Hello, 3D printer people. All right, and this, this is our final screencast. I'm going to show you how to add supports and slice your object for print using the wonderful Flash Print slicing software. Okay, first thing we need to do, select an extruder. We double click here. It says no model is selected. So we select the model. It gives us a choice, right extruder, left extruder. Um, it's important to know what type of filament is loaded in each of them, so you select the right one for your application. I want to use PLA because I want a nice smooth finish on this, so I'm going to choose left extruder, and I'm going to exit out of here. Don't hit reset because then it will take your selected extruder off, so just exit out. Next step, supports. Okay, you've got two choices for supports under support options. You've got tree-like and linear. I find that tree-like work better for organic objects, like this thing behind us, for statues, things like that. Linear work better for things with a lot of right angles and sharp corners. Um, so, for instance, I was printing a seat latch for something, I used linear because uh, it was mostly square. Whereas if I'm printing this thing, statues, I use tree-like. Your options down here let you control how big the supports are going to be, uh, how big the base of the supports are going to be, uh, how high they are, how soon they start, what degree at which they start generating supports, so forth and so on. Uh, we don't need to change any of that. We're just going to click OK and we're going to hit auto support. It's going to take a second to generate supports because this thing's going to need a lot of help because it's got a lot of funky overhangs and whatnot. And we see our little status bar down here, moving, moving, moving. Um, this is a cool looking... This is going to look really neat with a light or something inside of it. We're done with it. Okay, so it's almost done generating supports now. It says 27%, but usually it jumps from 27 to 100%. There we go. Okay. Now it's all done. You see all those supports in there, and yes, it does need all of those supports. Now, optimally, we could do this with like a dissolvable filament because it's going to be a pain in the butt to get rid of all these uh, supports when we're done. But if you don't have a dissolvable, dissolvable filament, you got to do what you got to do. All right, we're going to click back. Do I want to save supports to this file now? No, because they automatically save when I export the G-code. So there's no point in saving it twice. Now you notice the back of my build plate here is red now. That's because when I automatically generated my supports, some of them are sticking out just enough that they're off the build platform. So what I need to do here is click on my object, go to Edit, and go to Auto Layout. There we go, and it just bumped it away from the wall just enough that it's no longer hitting and no longer going to be a problem. Okay, last thing is the actual slicing, and that's where you click this print button here. All right, it brings up options. You've got, you can tell it what uh, materials you have loaded in your various extruders. Now, in this case, uh, I went with PLA, which is my left extruder. Uh, auto match means it'll uh, print your supports in whatever. Um, if you're printing in PLA, you'll print them in PLA, and so forth and so on. Uh, raft, you can disable it or choose. This one you have to choose manually. Um, I usually go with the same type of plastic that I'm using. Um, so if I'm using PLA, I'll print my raft in PLA, but I have had good results uh, using uh, ABS with PLA and uh, the opposite too. So it really depends on your application. However, I would not disable it uh, because I've yet to be able to print things well using uh, Flash Forge Creator without a raft. So uh, in this case, I am going to use left because that's where my PLA is. And that's all set. Now, you see these options here. When you first start out, you can go with a low resolution, which will print really fast, but won't be terribly good quality. Standard, high, or hyper. Now, I'm going to jump in here to the more options and show you what each of these are doing so that you can understand a little bit better about what all these settings do. Okay, layer height. The bigger your layer height, the lower the quality the object is going to be. It's like painting. The finer the brush, the more the detail is going to be. So this isn't going to have very good detail because the layers are so big. Whereas if we go to hyper, oh my gosh, look at how small those layers are. Or high, or standard. 
um, and you see they progressively get bigger. And the first layer height is almost always bigger than the second layer heights because you want to lay down a nice thick layer of plastic like you'd lay down a nice thick layer of concrete if you were building a building you want to lay a nice, nice thick layer of plastic to build the rest of your model on um, so that's your layer height settings there and you can play around with those shells are how many walls basically that's going to build around the object in this case it's going to have two walls of plastic um, on the perimeters and three on the top and three on the bottom. I like to set everything to two if it's going to be ornamental because that way it prints fast and it's still plenty strong. However, if the object is going to see any kind of stress, which means it's going to be used for something like that seat latch I was talking about earlier, you can bump this up to four or even five. Uh, in fact, I think I did the seat latch on six. Um, so what now what I would do, I like to set them all at the same because um, unless you know what direction the stress is going to be coming from on the object, it probably is going to need to be uniformly strong. Infill also affects how strong the object is. Um, for anything ornamental, you don't need any infill. You can just go with zero infill. Uh, however, if it's again going to be under any sort of a stress, you can go but anything between 15 and 30 percent is usually more than sufficient. Um, for something that's really going to be under strain, you could probably go with 40 or 50 percent infill. Um, 100 percent infill makes it a solid plastic object, um, which you can do if you want, but that would just take a long, long time to print. Fill pattern, you've got your option of hex hexagon, line, and triangle. We talked about that a little bit uh, in the packet. Uh, triangle is the best, it's the strongest, but it's also slower. Hexagon is the best combination of strength and speed. It's also why bees use it in their uh, hives. And line just isn't very good, so uh, I wouldn't suggest using it if you're going to use infill. Combine infill is a good way to save time. It means it prints two layers of infill at once. Um, instead of printing one layer of infill, because why not? If it's just printing infill, you might as well make it go faster. So uh, that helps you speed up some t uh, speed up your print a little bit. So I always like to leave that on. Now speed here. This is your print speed. That's how fast the extruder head is traveling when it's actually uh, extruding plastic. And 80 millimeters per second is how fast it's traveling when it's not extruding. And again, the slower this is, the more likely you are to get really high quality objects, but the slower your print will take. So, um, or rather the longer your print will take. So in this case, I like to stick with 60 and 80 on my travel speed. I've had good luck with those. Um, I've even gone as high as 100 on my travel speed and haven't really seen too much of a detrimental effect. Temperature. Uh, temperature is important because you uh it, it oh, why am i all right that threw me for a loop for a second because i've only got two uh two settings here that's because i'm, I'm doing everything in pla uh, so all i have are the pla options i'm actually going to change my raft here so that i'm printing it with uh abs so i can show you the abs options as well okay so right extruder abs um 230 is the starting temperature uh, and then go up in degrees of five because uh, anything less than five, you won't see too much of a change. I found that with this particular ABS, I need to print it at at least 235 because it's really poor quality, and I need to really smooth it out by heating it up. Um, PLA, you can start at 200 and then go up again in increments of five. Um, you know that it's too hot when you get uh, little drippy lines coming off of things. Now, it's normal to have drippy lines when it's first heating up, and starting but if you have drippy lines throughout the print then you've got a problem and it's probably too hot so that's just a, a, a top tip right there so I'm gonna set this one to 200 that's my starting point ABS is always going to be 230 platform uh, 80 is usually good for ABS you can go down to about 50 or 60 for PLA I've found um, last thing here is cooling fans Cooling fans are great for PLA because they uh, help it cool, uh, it, it, it smooths it out nicely. ABS, I want to stay away from cooling for the most part because um, I don't want it to cool down too quickly and have the object warp because that's one of the big problems you have with ABS. So with the, if I was printing something in ABS, I would just turn my cooling fans off. Um, 
when I'm printing something in PLA, I do it when on to a preset height. And what I do is I have a print the raft and my first layer height. So I just look at my first layer height. Uh, in this case, I'm printing uh, at point, point 0.18. So I'll go here and I'll change my first layer height, uh, or rather my, my fan on option, to the height of my first layer. So that as soon as my raft and my first layer are done printing, then my fans will kick on. Because that means the plastic stays a little bit stickier when I'm trying to get it to stick to the bed, uh, which is important for bed adhesion. Um, your other option you see here, auto match. I have yet to find a good description of what auto match does. However, I have found it to be somewhat effective when printing ABS. Yet I have no idea what it does. So experiment with it at your own uh, at your own risk. All right, that's it. Let's just go over this real fast one more time. Layer height. Uh, the higher the layer, the worse the quality is going to be, but the faster the object is going to print. Shells. More shells equal more strength. Infill, more infill equals more strength. Not necessary for things that are just ornamental though. Hexagon, usually your best choice on infill. Speed, 6080 is a good place to start. Temperatures, 230 is your starting point for ABS, 200 for PLA, and then your print bed, anywhere between 50 and 80 is usually good. Uh, last but not least, I like to set my cooling fan to turn on uh, at a preset height, and I like that preset height to be once my raft is printed and my first layer. So I just match my my first layer height. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 0.27, so I would have I would have messed that up. So I match my first layer height to my fan uh, on time, and then it prints my first layer and then kicks the fans on. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, we click OK to get out of this. It asks us where we want to save. You browse to where you want to save. You click the Save button. Uh, yes, that's OK. And now it's going to export my G code. And uh, right now it's actually doing the slicing. So once it's done slicing it, all I need to do is go to where I saved it, drag and drop that onto my SD card. Of course, you can also save it directly to your SD card if you want to. And then stick that bad boy in your FlashForge printer and go to town. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Um, good luck printing and take it easy.